Good morning and welcome to Adobe Live. It's 9.30 a.m. Pacific time and we're so happy you guys are here. We have Grace Jew from Canada going to be doing some fantasy illustration with us today. Hi, Grace. Hi, I'm so excited to be here. We're definitely happy to have you here. Um, Just want to say hi to everybody. It's Monday. Hope you guys are ready for this stream. I just want to say hi to the chat. Uh, Sean Kossel, Andreas Haller, Wade Akoff is uh, moderating for us today. Thank you, Wade. Always awesome. Um, excited for you guys to be here. If you guys are on YouTube, please come on over to Behance, b.net slash Adobe Live. That's where you guys can talk with us in the chat. That's what we're moderating. So if you're on YouTube, great. It's awesome. But if you want to talk to us, come on over to Behance, okay? b.net slash Adobe Live. Um, so yeah, and also don't forget, we're doing replays all this week of Sam Peterson's Photoshop daily creative challenge at 9 AM all this week. So check that out as well. Um, yeah, so we've got Grace Jew here. Um, I think we're going to be doing some, uh, whole process on a character fantasy illustration. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from and show us some of your work, that would be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Grace Drew, and I currently live in Montreal, Canada. So it is actually 12.30 p.m. here for me in Eastern time. Um, And today we're going to be doing a fantasy character design illustration. Um, And I do want to make it a little bit spooky because just in time for Halloween, and I'm really, really excited to share some personal work process with you. Um, But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. And this is my current portfolio. Um, As you can see, I do a lot of fantasy art, some a little darker, but some just more veering towards the magical and fantastical. Um, I've been drawing for something like, uh, I want to say 15 years or so, drawing digitally. Um, I started with Photoshop 6, like not CS6, like Photoshop 6, like the really really old version. Um, And that's kind of been my journey until now where I'm actually just using uh, Photoshop 2019, I think. Um, yeah, so it's, I've been using Photoshop for like almost the entirety of, uh, since I've been drawing. Um, currently I do freelance as kind of a, uh, part-time gig or, uh, side gig, if you will. Um, and this year I've been doing a lot of book covers and, uh, tutorials, awesome. uh, and just general illustrations for mostly for clients, which I've been really excited about. Um, and I'm also teaching uh every week for this term and next term at sin studio which is a concept art school based in montreal but currently mostly online because of the global situation um right. so That's yeah awesome. yeah and this is some more of my work yeah these are beautiful oh thank you so much yeah i love i love the color palette it's very ethereal um yeah these are great yeah i'm definitely do you work, a sucker do you work for... mostly with oh sorry go ahead go ahead I'm definitely a sucker for glowing stuff, I wanted to say. So maybe I'll try to incorporate some of that into today's illustration as well. It's Halloween. We want some glow. Yeah. Some some mysteries, maybe some smoke. Yeah. And cool. And then, um, yeah, I guess take us through uh, what the plan is for the stream and then what you're going to do today. Yeah, for sure. Um, So I'll show you what I've already started. Um, in terms of the character design, I decided to start just with a base, just so I don't have, that's kind of less of a design step and more just like a starting point for me. Um, right, so right. today, so today uh, I'd like to make a couple of different designs with some input from the chat, um, make a clean design out of that. And then tomorrow we're going to color it, render it up and make it look really nice. So that's okay, kind of the cool. overall plan for the two days. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So do you usually start, do you kind of 
hop in with do you kind of use some uh figure modeling reference or where do you usually grab your reference for these the starting point do you have like a favorite place mm -hmm. to do it or is it just kind of yeah for sure um so for this uh this is kind of the really rough base that i started just to um, get the gesture of the character down because that's really important to have a bit of that movement I find that if I if I copy a reference one for one, it tends to end up looking too stiff. So this is really just kind of the, the rough um, gesture to get the energy down. And then I'll use multiple references. Usually I get reference packs from, you know, ArtStation or there are like a lot of good references on Adobe Stock as well. Um, right, right. Yeah, to really get like fine details so you can see there's some a bit of like muscle detail and everything here, especially the knee, because that's I find that really difficult to try. Yeah, no, completely. And I think yeah. that's a great way to do it of you kind of starting with your gestural. So it's mm -hmm. you're finding your rhythm, your weight and your stance first and then using the, the actual photo reference to to refine all those parts. So you're not just copying right. something or copying a photo. You're, you're kind of deciding what it is first and then and then using that as as tools to to refine the the final kind of like base model yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah is it better now Okay, perfect. Uh, Sean Castle says, "Wow, just wow!" He's really impressed with your work. Uh, oh, thank Anna you. Tahir, or Hina Tahir, also work is amazing. And saying hi to everybody. Thanks for joining us in the chat, guys. We really appreciate it. And obviously, the show doesn't exist without you guys. Obviously, I mean, everybody watching and learning and joining in is what makes this fun. So, thanks again for coming around. Uh, yeah. So. Let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, just a little yeah. bit more about what I'm doing here. I've mm -hmm. gathered a lot of different various character references that I found inspiring. And then what I'm going to show today is actually how to find uh, inspiration and get ideas from ornamental objects. So here I've downloaded these. These are just, you know, from open access museums. You can find these in really high resolution online. And I want nice. to incorporate these into the design. Uh, so I'm just going to start off with uh, a couple of different variations and see where that takes us. Oh yeah, that's that's cool. I didn't even think about that. That's a great that's a great way to get reference. Um, yeah, I can't yeah, take credit local for museum. it. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I've definitely seen it online before, but um, I just think it's a really original way of doing something that's like maybe less derivative that other people haven't done before. Um, right. So let's see how this turns out. Well, and, and you kind of, a lot of these, the, most of these artists are masters or had some kind of impact. Um, so the designs obviously are, are pretty special. Yeah, exactly. I feel like it gives you such an appreciation of like um, all of the artwork that, you know, that's historical and came before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really cool. Well, especially now with everything being so digital, it's nothing really beats, you know, a, it's hard to, you could, you could paint a wood sculpture, but seeing a wood sculpture in person is, you know, it's like a whole different, whole different story. So it is, it is really amazing to kind of see how much time um, some of these artisans put into some of these pieces. It's really, the detail on these are pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Like um, imagining that someone is just carving all of this by hand. Uh, I mean, it's probably out crazy. of one piece. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, right. It's pretty wild. But I, I can already see how you know how much you could pull from this just with like fabric or feathers or you know it's filigree or just all these kind of nice accents to uh, a costume or. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I do have a little bit of an idea or mood that I want to capture with the character. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I won't get that much inspiration in terms of the cloth from the ornaments, for example. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely want to do like uh, some kind of like a big sweeping cloth, very like, I don't know, majestic, fantastical. Um, mm -hmm. But I really want to use the, the fine details for inspiration for um, the other parts of the design. 
uh, to really add that like beautiful uh, intricacy to to the mm. design. Yeah, uh, it's and it's probably some contrast between that the big flowing dress and then you have the really like tight intricate pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So do you usually sketch in a certain color or is this um, is this kind of the color you're going to be using or do you usually just start with like a black or does it matter? Uh, for me, I think I generally start with a dark color and then once mm -hmm. I do the clean sketch, I'll like, for example, uh, make this a different color just so I can draw on top. Um, gotcha. Before the base sketch where I'm just getting the idea down, um, I think like a simple color, simple brush is the best for me. Uh, right. The less I have to really think about it, the better at this stage, because I really want to just focus on the idea, the silhouette, um, that kind of stuff for now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cornell says, what a cool headset. I have to agree. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Is this your go-to headset? Yeah, for sure. Um, Do you have multiples or is this the one? This is, this is the one. I got it a couple months ago because, you know, I've been working from home all this time and I just wanted to get myself something that yeah, totally. I guess really feels like me. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that's what I've been doing a lot during, you know, this work from home, like mm -hmm. just really getting stuff that makes me feel happy regardless of, I don't know, maybe some people wouldn't like it, but yeah, it feels really like a good fit for me. Well, so. it seems like the chat loves it. So I oh. think you're oh, good that's company. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And then Sam, actually Sam Peterson's in the chat. He's a uh, been doing the Photoshop daily creative challenges. He's also oh, cool. an excellent uh, fantasy illustrator um, who also does a lot of dark stuff. I think more like knights and trolls and all kinds of D&D &D, D &D stuff. Um, but he says he oh, knows somebody awesome. who went to Sin Studio. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, Is this, uh, is this all, is it just online right now? Is it also have in-person when obviously um, we can so, do that or? Yeah, they, they used to have in-person classes and currently they, I think they have a few that are in-person, um, mm -hmm. but just logistically, and I think they're seeing some benefit to doing online as well. Right. Um, for me, it's really cool because I don't have to commute, but also I get to interact with students from all over the world, which for me is a really big plus. Like, I just think it's, really really cool for me to have students from like europe from you know peru mexico mm -hmm. like i yeah. i would never know how to reach those students otherwise um but yeah. through sin studio like they're in the class and it's it's really cool interacting with them yeah i mean that's with the adobe live similar situation i mean i remember going to san francisco in 2018 and like you know it was amazing being there in studio in person and obviously you're going to have some things that are just going to be different being in person but mm -hmm. now that it's all virtual yeah the amount of international artists that can be involved has just exploded because they don't have to fly here to just be on the show you know they can you can just yeah. do it from your home and so it's been incredible i mean the amount of talent and, and variety um that adobe live is able to bring in now is it's really awesome so i mean obviously the same thing with any any kind of digital platform mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely advantages to being in person, but I like that. I think uh, a lot of people are also embracing the advantages of being fully digital as well. Yeah, and I think moving forward, we're probably, it's going to just be a mishmash. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it not being, you know, I think some right. people excel digitally um, and are more comfortable, you know, learning from their own home mm -hmm. or studio. Yeah, especially for digital art, I think it works really well. Um, mm -hmm. Although I do know people in, you know, university courses who really struggle with the online learning format. Uh, but I think in some ways, digital painting is like uniquely more suited to the online format um, just because of how accessible it is. Like everything's kind of done through Photoshop anyway. Um, so I think it works better than maybe, I don't know, learning history or something. 
completely because yeah you would be pretty much watching a screen anyways or watching right. them paint and yeah. it's it is almost easier just you know oh i just throw it up full screen on my you know my computer and i can just sit mm. and watch every stroke and yeah uh, exactly. it really it really is cool okay so now we've moved into a, a slightly more refined sketch it looks like or are you sketching yeah, yeah. a different piece no this is really just me kind of refining the original okay. trying to get a bit more of a shape into it um mm -hmm. because i find that i i don't really think too much like the first the first sketch but now i do want to think a little bit about what's like physically possible and like to try to make it at least a little bit plausible um right. of course it's <laughs> you know going to be fantasy and it doesn't have to right. be super realistic um, but I still want it to look like it's actually that she's actually wearing it and it's not just, I don't know, weirdly floating in space. Yeah. She's not wearing a dress on her head. It's right. Still yeah. Be, yeah. Draped on her body. So yeah, think exactly. The physics and yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, I think that's when fantasy is kind of at its best is mm -hmm. if it, it feels, it feels otherworldly, but it could, it could work in your own world you know some there's a connection yeah. there that you can still have exactly like it doesn't have to be realistic but i think it's always good to incorporate some realism and consider the plausibility of the design mm -hmm. Oh, I, there, we were trying to plug your Instagram, but it seems like uh, Instagram might be uh, down right now. So. Oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> Somebody was able to find the the exact URL, so oh, they posted no. that up. But yeah, for some oh, reason, I don't know what's you. going on with that. But no, that's unfortunate. Is that where you post a lot of your work? Or is there um, is, you have a website as well? Yeah, so I have the website, which is what I sh mm -hmm. uh, showed at the beginning of the stream. Okay, um, and I think we got that up below the okay. video there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I use... Twitter maybe a bit more than Instagram. Um, okay. it, it's not that I like it better per se. It's just uh, it. I seem to be more popular on Twitter for whatever reason. Um, right. So I'm kind of running with that. Um, Angels, yes. Um, so it looks like you're building layers to make the drawing just like an oil painting. Is mm -hmm. that correct? I mean, this is basically like the underpainting that we're establishing right now, correct? Yeah, um, actually my normal process is maybe like when I do just pure illustrations is maybe a more mm -hmm. like an oil painting. Mm -hmm. um, for the character design, I'm actually going to be uh, removing like this rough sketch because I just want the clean lines. Uh, so right. for this particular process, I would say maybe it's less like an oil painting um, mm -hmm. because I will be kind of removing all of this uh, at the next step. Once gotcha. I pick a design, right? Uh, so these, so these colors, none of this is really going to be yeah, used. Yeah, none of this. It's really just matters. really defining the structure and, exactly. and the design. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's much this more is like done, a sketch. Yeah, this is done so I can like really focus purely on the design. But if I was mm -hmm. doing a more illustrative work, my approach for that um, is more like an oil painting. I would probably want to keep this, um, just because I. I think the having this underpainting show through, for example, in the final painting, I think gives it something of like a, it gives it a nice touch. I feel like a bit of um, texture, a bit of like the original intent shows through. Um, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it it makes it it's it makes it less perfect in yeah, a way. Yeah, exactly. It kind of it may, yeah, it, it lends a little itself a little bit more to the traditional textures and style, mm -hmm. which I think the eye can tell yeah um yeah yeah but no this is really more design work than i'm doing right now and do you usually are you usually working with female characters do you do any other other uh, monsters or male characters or animals yeah, uh, for me, female characters are just kind of a comfort zone for me. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of wanted to like do something chill during the stream and not yeah, challenge no, myself too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, but otherwise, I do uh, I do some male characters, not so much monsters, but I have been trying to draw a little more animals recently. Uh, mm -hmm. 
just yesterday, actually, I was doing a uh, character design study where I incorporated some animals into it. So um, the animals were kind of part of the design. Like I added three really cute cats to the design and nice. that was more like to supplement the character uh, mm -hmm. as part of the design. So that was pretty fun. Um, I don't really usually draw animals, so but they turn out right. pretty nice, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole other beast, literally. It's yeah. <laughs> Although I do work. find that like, even if I haven't drawn animals in like, I don't know, probably five years, uh, my ability to draw animals does improve with my ability with, you know, the anatomy studies and like everything like right. that, even if I haven't practiced, which is pretty cool, I think. Right. Yeah. You're still studying structure, yeah. you know, yeah. light and form. Yeah. It's all the same principles. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So I thought that was uh, unexpected find yesterday. Yeah. I think with, for me with animals, it's like just making sure that I have reference yeah just for absolutely. something like i just got yeah it's like I, I know the structure of that leg but like i need to see it <laughs> yeah for me i don't know the structure of that leg but if i have a reference i can kind of guess and usually it turns right. out like okay if i have the right. fundamentals from studying human anatomy mm -hmm. yeah it's all very similar right i mean we're all mm -hmm. especially with mammals is you're going to have a very similar structure with all of them yeah exactly Right now, I'm trying to think if it would be better to have a necklace or something on the neck or not. Mm -hmm. I think I will maybe keep. Yeah, something it couldn't. There, it'd but... have to be either like a like a choker style or yeah. something, right? Because there's like so much small. going on, yeah, exactly. on the, around it that it, yeah, it'd have to be like right. a laser focused. Okay, so I'll keep it small and simple, and maybe change it up later. Um, yeah. I did also draw like an initial version of the hair in there, but that's also something I can change up. And I mm -hmm. think I'll actually try that now. Uh, maybe if I try like a really high ponytail or something, we'll see mm -hmm. how that works. And as far as your layer structure, mm -hmm. is that something that you're, do you label as, I mean, it looks like you, do you label it afterwards? Is this something it's just kind of free flowing? Like how important is it to you to have that organized? Um, that That's, that's a good question, but I think it really just depends on what I'm feeling like at the mm -hmm. moment. Uh, for right. most client work, I will try to keep it organized to uh, make it easier to make changes, make it easier to, you know, iterate on specific parts of the image. But for mm -hmm. personal work, I think it's kind of a free for all <laughs> until yeah. no, I decide totally. it's too messy and then I'll go back and like sort of correct it. Definitely. Um, yeah. Because it can kind of. It can kind of mess up the yeah it's it can be mess up the flow a little bit when you have to like sit and rename the layer or we're gonna put it in a group or like you know kind of yeah do all those yeah things. it kind of takes you out of the out of the process of creation a little bit mm -hmm. not sure how i feel about a crown but maybe i'll try that for now um, what I would usually do if I'm doing like different design variations is that I don't necessarily like label the layers, but I will group them per design. So it's easy for gotcha. me to like hide and show different ones. Uh, right. and that's what I'll be doing in a bit. I think this is maybe about as far as I want to take this one. Um, okay. so I'm going to do a couple of different designs and then, uh, discuss with you and see if the chat has any input on to cool. which one I should continue with. Cool, that's exciting. So that was the first one. Gonna enable, gonna save, because that's important to do often. Uh, and then move on Now, is this to... her tan line that we're looking at right now? No, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I meant for this to be a bodysuit, just so, I don't know. Totally. There's no accidental yeah, yeah. nudity on the stream, but yeah, yeah, no, totally. <laughs> be very pale for a tan line. <laughs> Uh, okay, so. All right. Bye, bye, Robert. Hope you have a good nap. He says bye to us. He's going to rest All his right. little eyes. Yeah, thanks for coming, Robert. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I wish I could take nap during naps during the day. I feel like um, 
I'm not really a good napper because no, nope, I always sleep I for like either. you know two or three hours if I do fall asleep, and then at that point I feel like it's no longer a nap. It's more of like yeah, a you, yeah, small your body sleep, will right? not like that. No, <laughs> like, no, I feel worse after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really I can't do that. I can't do the cat nap either. Yeah, very no. very difficult. Yeah. But yeah, my uh, my twenty month old can he can sleep for three hours during the day just fine. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Annika Agarwal. Hope you're saying your last name right. She said, "I just checked out Grace's work on Behance, and the project titled Fantasy is so good." Oh, thank you so much. She's very excited about it. I have to go check that out. Yeah, I have I've done so much stuff this year that I unfortunately hasn't been released yet that I can't show. Um, but yeah, what know I have on feeling. the pants is all stuff that I can show. Um, mm -hmm. but I have even more exciting stuff. I'm just like, oh, I can't wait I can't wait to share those. I know you've got the either the NDAs or yeah, it hasn't been released yet or yeah. all the things. Yeah, that that can that's tough sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really sure how this will work like physics wise, but I do really like this golden piece that can kind of function as a halo. So I'm just trying to yeah. put that behind the character and then figure out the details later. That's very cool. And are those kind of wing? Wings yeah, coming exactly. Out around? Okay. Um, I really very like cool. these little like wing ornaments here. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to exaggerate them and find a nice shape. Uh, yeah, there's a lot going on with this clock. Um, so I'm trying to yes. incorporate different parts, but then still have them look cohesive because I definitely don't think I can put everything in here. It's definitely but... not like a postmodern minimalist design. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just throw every detail you can into one piece. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but it's cool to see you kind of pick and choose how you want it to influence the, the design um it's good for people to see kind of how how other artists um use their reference because it's easy to say like oh just go get reference you know go find this but i, mm -hmm. I think people sometimes have a hard time understanding what they're what they should pull from it or you know yeah so it's kind of sure. cool to see how people do that and how they integrate like okay i like this radiation you know mm -hmm. this kind of halo thing and then okay i can integrate it with these like little wing designs and, and little pieces and then you can kind of see some of the like other um little things that could end up in there um yeah I, I think that is really cool for a lot of people to see yeah something that took me the longest time in my artistic journey is really um figuring out that by using reference it doesn't mean copying a reference uh and that yeah. took me so long to like really understand uh, what artists mean when they say use reference and how they use it to create original works. I think it's something that's not really taught or at least it's never been really taught to me. Um, so mm -hmm. that's something that I did have to figure out on my own. And now I'm hoping to share that with other people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I went to the um, Academy of Art in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And so I went there for illustration. So we did a, little, a ton of... Uh, figure clothes drawing um mm. nude figure drawing but i think that was that first initial like you have ref direct reference in front of you and you're trying mm -hmm. to draw it but you're you're trying to make it your own right it's yeah. like don't draw what you see you know take what you see find out what could be improved and then make it your own make it better mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's definitely something that takes a lot of practice to kind of figure out how to make it your own and how to integrate those into your design. Cause it's so easy to just copy it, especially with digital. Yeah, exactly. And to try to resist that and really improve your drawing skills and do it on your own. Try to do it, you know, one-to-one -one where you can just using your eye and not just putting it on your canvas and, and going over it, but really, really trying to make those proportions yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it pays dividends in the end. I mean, it's, you're gonna become so much better at it as you do it and just takes takes a long time 
Just yeah, takes for sure. lots of lots of drawing, <laughs> lots of practice. Yeah. Nothing does not happen overnight with any of this stuff. I have um, so my day job is programming, and I'm always people are always oh, cool. surprised, and they're like, uh, uh, "Wow, I wish I had your talent for drawing." Uh, but I always tell them like it's just a lot of time, just a lot, a lot of time. It's, uh, I don't know if there's really any uh, talent involved. I mean, it's it is one of those things where it really. It, it is a, it's a skill it's like a master skill mm -hmm. so it's it just yeah. really takes effort and time and consistency and discipline because mm -hmm. i remember seeing some artists in school that they had come to the figure drawing class and they could barely draw mm -hmm. anything and at the end of four years they were doing incredible you know amazing figure drawings and charcoal and oils like realistic i mean they had color down shape form and they started at nothing basically. And, and just within four years of putting in a ton of hard work, they were amazing. So it really is something where your talent is gonna maybe take you to a level that other people can't get to. Right. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's gonna be hard work that's gonna mm -hmm. take you there. It's yeah. like, if you have both, you're really, really lucky, but oh, hard sure. work and, and discipline is really what's gonna take you pretty far in the art world. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to hear more about uh, your experience with art school, if you don't mind. Um, so for oh, me, yeah. I'm almost entirely self-taught. Like I've taken some classes, but definitely, you know, I didn't have that traditional art school education, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, like, what was it like? Do you, would you recommend it? Like, what are your thoughts? Oh man, on... it's like, that's like the question, right? <laughs> yes, like, it's especially with question. art school. Yeah, yeah. I think for art you, school, like, yeah, for me personally, you know, I was, definitely not the best student. Um, and so I went for about four years, I'd never graduated, oh. which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I, but was I'd it worthwhile spent, yeah. still? Yeah, because I met it as far as the one, it was just being in person with instructors helped mm. me a lot, and really like, get that foundation, especially at the academy, it's very foundation focused. Mm. Um, and just putting in the hours and then also just being around so many other like-minded individuals. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like you said, the virtual, the digital thing's great, but when you're in a room full of 30 people and you're all drawing, it's like yeah, the energy's energy is different. Mm -hmm. You get the feedback instantly. You kind of, you're challenging yourself because the person right next to you and, and you're just, you're being constantly challenged and like, okay, how can I do this? How can I do that? Um, so for me, the biggest thing was networking, right? Like I, some of the, a lot of the jobs that I got people that I've met and, you know, it all kind of came from going to school and then mm -hmm. all of the events that happened after that were kind of connected to the, my time at school and making those friends. So mm -hmm. that was a big, big part for me. Cause you can learn a lot of this stuff online and especially now, Right. Yeah. The, the digital learning landscape is incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. that is where I spend a lot of my time just continuing my studies. Um, and like you said, with the sin, um, is it sin studio? Yes. Um, schoolism, you got the art station mm -hmm. learning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Domestic Which is free, uh, I think until the end of the year. Oh yeah. I think that's, yeah. they just saw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, an art station does those great challenges too, which are really cool. Yeah. Um, also with, you know, like you've got Adobe Live <laughs> where we're mm -hmm. doing this yes. and all of this is free to join. And and um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's totally a personal choice. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's good for some people to just step out of their comfort zone. Right. But I, it is expensive. It's, it's a commitment. And so, yeah, it's kind of it's got its pros and cons like anything else, but for me, it was good. I I'm glad I did it and I don't regret it. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah. I do sometimes wonder if like, you know, I did miss out on something not going to art school. Uh, I think it's a bit late for me in terms of uh, where I am with my life, well, but I would love you, to you do know, more. The, there's always like kind of what you said. It's like, 
finding groups and doing like figure drawing, you know, yeah, there's a lot yeah, of like, sure. you know, like Dr. Sketchies is like, mm-hmm. a, you know, I don't know, if, I think they just do it in uh, color California, but you know, you go to a bar and you hang out and you do figure drawing for, you know, a couple hours with a bunch of artists, you know, they've got, mm-hmm. there's so many things that you can kind of find supplemental s- stuff that hopefully will become available again, obviously with the pandemic and everything. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's been hard for a lot of people uh, mm-hmm. to kind of get that same instruction, but yeah, it's, I think it is valuable to get some of that in-person energy and um, especially with art. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I would like to have a better mix. Uh, For example, like, so I do a lot of digital drawing and I've pretty much only done digital drawing for the past, Mm -hmm. I don't know, like seven years or so. And I really love to get back into traditional. um, How much do you work with traditional media these days? Um, Not a lot. Okay. (laughs) And I, and I, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really start doing digital. Um, well, I didn't really start doing it a lot until about 2011. Mm-hmm. And so, and I started going to art school in 2005. So I, I was more of acrylic painting. I did some oils. Um, I sculpted a lot. So that wasn't even on my radar. But then once I started doing a lot of client work, it became very obvious that working traditionally didn't match the amount that they wanted to pay me. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can really do yeah, like one totally. revision, two revisions tops if we're doing it traditionally. Yeah. But digitally, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, right. I'll just uh, mm-hmm. slide around the hues and do, you know, there's yeah. so many the options. The cost of supplies and everything as well, if you're doing like oil Oh, yeah, painting, and the space example. you need and the, and the cleanup. Yeah, and, yeah, like, all of that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. I think I've been working almost strictly digitally for probably same like almost, almost 10 years now, so... Mm-hmm. But I still, I still do like, you know, I wish I was doing more traditional, but it's just finding the time and yeah, I'm so used to it now is like, that's my sketch sketchbook is, right. is my Cintiq. So yeah, me too. Like when I have an idea, I usually open up Photoshop and do a sketch, even though I yeah. have like a dozen <laughs> sketchbooks that I should yeah. be using that I keep accumulating, right. but um, right. no, Photoshop is still kind of my go-to uh for jotting down ideas thumbnails and everything yeah i guess it's a good question for the chat too how many of you guys do traditional and do you guys work exclusively digital or exclusively traditional we kind of want to hear that's um it is interesting to kind of see where everybody's at with that um, Mm -hmm. especially now with everything so everything online yeah Um, for sure and just a quick reminder for everybody um if you're over on youtube Come on over to Behance at b.net slash Adobe Live, because that's where we get to hear your comments and get to answer your questions. You get to ask or answer or ask Grace any questions you want about her process. So I think we're working on the some of the wings here, looks like, and kind of this is this is our second uh, iteration. How many more are you going to do before you start to or see which ones you want to kind of refine? I think probably one more. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the time for sure. Okay. But I think one more is probably doable. Okay, perfect. And is this just like a hard round brush or is there, is this a specific kind of brush? Okay. Yeah, it is just a hard round brush. Is this the, Um, uh, is it pressure or, okay, it's flow. Yes. Uh, The settings are here. You can see that it's a transfer and shape dynamics. Uh, Just the flow jitter on the transfer. This is my gotcha. typical round sketching brush. Yeah. Um, for I want to say for ninety five percent of my process, I just use like three brushes, and that's it. Okay. I, I mean, really yeah, like you don't really need. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just like with regular painting, you really don't need. You know, you need a few good ones, and that's right, about it. Exactly. Um, because people ask me this a lot. I think like, what brushes do you use? What do you like? How do you? Use yeah, them? when there's like a million of them out there, and they're yeah, like, buy my exactly. brush pack, and you're just and like, every brush pack has like, I don't know, at least thirty something brushes. So if you buy five yep. brush packs, like, what are you gonna do with all of them? Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, yeah, I I do like buying brush packs to really pick out specific ones that I want to use or experiment with. Uh, but if I'm doing like uh, 
comfort zone work or like client work, I really try to keep the brush use to a minimum just so it's one mm-hmm. less thing for me to um, have to focus on as I as I go. Right. Because there's so many right. things to think about already, right? Like if you're doing yeah, an illustration, no. there's just a ton of different things to consider at every stage. And I like to keep the brushes simple. And if I want to have really nice brush strokes, I'll probably add them at the end, like to use mm-hmm. as a bit of texture. Uh, right. or like fin- finishing touches, refinement. Um, but for the sketch, it's like, you really don't want to be thinking about the brush at this point. Oh, no, completely. Yeah. And it looks like uh, people in the chat, we've got, everybody does a little bit of something. Let's see, Wade, our moderator, he does some traditional personal work, which I think probably ends up a lot of us is most of our personal work we try to do yeah. in the traditional. Um, Anthony Jackson says he does uh, both traditional and digital. Mm-hmm. Uh, but traditional helps him jot down his ideas faster, which I know okay. a lot of people as well. That's yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then Jesse Lacey says, uh, professionally, I'm a UX designer, but mm-hmm. I paint traditionally, do sculpture, and design and make costumes and clothing. Oh wow, which is awesome. I always yeah. love that. I I I mean, I think you can tell by the character design, but I just I love fashion. Like I wish I had the time to get into clothing design, um, mm-hmm. something I have planned for eventually, but that definitely requires time, investment, space, you know, learning yeah. everything. Yes, yes um, it's a lot. But one day, one day I definitely will. It's, uh, it's definitely a very cool process to watch. I had some good good friends in art school with, uh, for fashion designers, and it was always impressive be like how do you do this <laughs> yeah right like it just comes out and it's a piece of clothing it's like it's like magic like I really oh my god yeah you're watching it. them build it on the model and you're like yeah I don't think that's gonna work yeah I don't think I... that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure uh right now i'm trying to come up with a different hairstyle that'll match the halo from her head a little bit better um, I think it's just going to be like kind of really tapered to her head yeah. and we'll see if that works. Yeah, that's, that would make the most sense. Can't really. Yeah. I don't want it going everywhere to be, with like. The yeah, you don't want pieces. it to be fighting. Yeah, because yeah. it's already got this every, you know, yeah, you kind of want that hair to help shape her head. and. Right. But also just the practicality of like, if you're wearing a huge metal piece behind your head and your hair is like just flying in all directions, I feel like that's going to be very uncomfortable. Yeah, you don't want to have uh, frizzy, frizzy curly hair for this Oh yeah, for sure. (laughs) Not fun. Oh yeah, so Chris, I didn't even is there... think about the shoes. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, like, is there anything you don't like drawing? Because for me, shoes are always like I always try to avoid them. Because yeah, I... feet are hard. Yeah, it's like They're people so say weird, hands right? are hard. No, feet are harder than hands. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, the I always is laugh. Just so weird. Um, one of the funniest things I remember reading was uh, with Frank Frazetta. Mm-hmm. Obviously, uh, if you guys don't know please look him up but really famous uh fantasy illustrator and painter but he hated drawing feet and if you look at his paintings he's almost always hiding the character's feet oh that's funny i've never (laughs) noticed never paints them yeah and it's because he hated painting them so much but it it is hard to just get the right angles and the rhythm and especially with shoes um so i I always have try to have good reference from what I'm doing. Um, But there's definitely some good ways to, whenever you have really a lot of difficulty with that stuff, try to go find um, reference where they break them down into planes or simple shapes that you can think about these really, because, you know, the feet and the hands are so complicated with how many bones and muscles are in them. But if mm-hmm. you can find a good reference where they break them down into shapes, uh, it helps a lot. I know um, the Etherington, Etherington brothers, I know Lorenzo, he does the how do you think when you draw or how to think when you draw. And he does a great job of breaking down a lot of those shapes that I like. Um, but yeah, feet, I no. <laughs> don't, don't like drawing feet. That's definitely not, 
I I love drawing the face. That is like my favorite. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Thing, you know. I think just even as a kid, it's it's like, oh, I'll get to the body. I just want to draw this face for right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much variation in the face. Um, it's also where like my real comfort zone is, is really just drawing the face. For like yeah. many years, uh, I did like pretty much nothing but portraits. Um, mm -hmm. The sad thing is, like, you can't really get work doing nothing but portraits. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's really where my strength is as well, and where I prefer to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, what is it? Um, if you wanted to be an illustrator, it's like you have to be you have to be able to draw multiple characters in a scene, and you better be good with face and hands. Yeah, feet, for sure. feet are secondary on that one, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that's been a, a really tough one for me is really working on environment design and putting those mm -hmm. characters in there um, and having it enhance the characters and yeah. really push storytelling. Because um, sure. it's easy just to focus on a central character, but when you start adding multiple characters and then it really gets, it's it's hard. It's hard finding that balance. Yeah. Do you have any tips for placing characters in environments? Um, I've been getting better at it, but it's still something like I kind of struggle with and maybe it's true for other people as well. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I think it's the same design tips, you know, for um, working on any kind of composition, those, those same rules are going to apply and you just kind of have to think of your character as a shape and a, a you know, a, a temperature and what do you want them to be? Do, you know, do you want them to come to the forefront? Do you want them to be the first read or the second read? You know, like how mm. do you want them to push forward, push back? How do you want, you know, depending, especially with the story, is there going to be tension between the characters or is it mm. like a love or like, so all these things that are going into what you're doing for this, this piece, you want the entire composition to be informing that story. Yeah. Cause you sure. wouldn't want this story, but then all of a sudden you've got these weird tangents or the way the characters are next to each other is, you know, it's like, you've got the, you want this piece to be like warm and loving and the characters are kind of angled at each other weird, or maybe your colors aren't very warm or, you know, so you always kind of have to think of everything that you're doing is, informing your your what you want your final piece to look or, or the vibe or the story to be so it's always important to as you're working to stop and you used to do this you know it's a lot easier i feel like with the traditional you because you're mm -hmm. standing or working stop step back look at your composition you know command zero get your full palette on there mm -hmm. um and look at your work and Another good thing too is to flip flip your work if you can. That helps some people. Yeah. Flip your canvas, Definitely. and so you can kind of see. Sometimes it it looks good when you're working on it in this, but then you flip it and you're like, oh, actually the curve here is weird, or maybe the the weight isn't balanced. Um, so yeah, that's it's always good to take a break, take a good look at it. If you're lucky, you can have a a friend or somebody else help you and get a second opinion on it, which is always great too. Um, which is, but it's, I know it's tough. I've gosh, so many times I'll be working on a piece all by myself for like 50 hours and be like, yeah, well, I probably should have gotten a second opinion on that, but I don't think anybody was around. <laughs> oh no. Um, for me, but, I, yeah. I share a lot of like my work in progress on various discord communities. I actually oh, yeah, think that's it's a great idea. Yeah, I actually think it's one of the ways that um, I really started using Discord a lot more in 2020 because mm -hmm. I'm seeing people less. Um, and it's been such a boon to like my artistic growth, just having awesome. other artists there to bounce my ideas off of. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it for anyone looking for artistic communities. I really think Discord is kind of uh, where it's at if you want that kind of small, close-knit community where you can talk to people frequently. Um, that's where it's at. Cause it used to be kind of like forums and then it kind of was social media for a while. Um, right. yeah, but now a lot of the smaller communities are on discord. Well, I think discord's expanded what it's offered to yeah. now that you can do now you can share the streaming now. Right. And, yeah, and exactly. If you've got, you can 
organize everything into your hashtags and groups. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of, um, a lot of different companies and, and organizations use that now as a great right. way to kind of contact all their members. And so yeah, that's a yeah, great exactly. idea. That's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, um, um, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I was just going to say like, this is kind of the third design that I just started mm -hmm. based on this door. Um, if you're watching and you just joined us, we're doing uh, fantasy character designs based on decorative objects. Uh, so yeah, this is the third one and I'm just incorporating the shape into the main torso body and taking mm -hmm. things from there. Yeah, no, this is great. And it's, I, I'm glad that you have the reference up for us to see because that that also helps you be like, I'm using some reference and they'll be like, but what are you referencing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's good yeah, to I see Yeah, I do feel it. like that helps. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot. Yeah, I think just because you can see where it's coming from. And now are you going to be uh, referencing the textures at all for any of this? Or is that going to be something um, else? I don't know. I do. Not sure I yet. really okay. like the metal filigree. So I do think I'll try to keep it as much as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. But otherwise, I might have to pull up some other references for tomorrow when I'm really rendering out the details. I haven't mm -hmm. quite decided yet. Okay. Yeah, no, this is cool. Um, Cartier Gates says, my instructor has us watch Game of Thrones and pause the scenes to study the composition. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's totally um, one way to do it. I mean, yeah. cinematographers, no composition. <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, um, yeah, I um, recommend this a lot, like uh, really gathering your own ref uh, like composition references when you're watching shows. Um, I like to have something usually on my second screen when I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. So I go through a lot of TV shows and movies um, and I just have like a a software where if I press print screen, it'll save it to a specific folder. And then I could just oh, reference cool. that whenever I need uh, specific like composition references. It is such a good way to study like composition, storytelling. Um, I absolutely recommend it a lot. Uh, it's yeah, also that's a good, that's, that's mm -hmm. good advice with the, the, the shortcut to just- Yeah, because yeah, I do it that's... a lot. So it's definitely a good idea. Um, Oh, I was going to say, it's also a good way to find sometimes references. Like you can't always find exactly what you're looking for with the right lighting. But if you've seen it in a movie or a TV show and it's streaming, like it's always a good place to take that, take from mm -hmm. that directly uh, rather than, I don't know, trying to find the exact image, not really knowing what you're looking for. Um, it's a part of building your visual library. And I think it's just a really good exercise to continue doing that. Yeah, and you're you're going to be kind of learning on not only what you like, but mm -hmm. you're, you're like you said, it's it's going to be informing your work that you're going to be creating. And the more that you create yourself, or the more reference that you create yourself, or pull from more unique sources, the more interesting it's going to make your work. Yeah. Instead of just being like, well, I googled this, and then that's what I got. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, because that's what everyone else is going to get. So right. For sure. And also, don't forget your library. Library is a good place too. And I know you can. There's oh, yeah. a lot of libraries have online resources now. So even if you can't go in person, I think a lot of the libraries have been putting it up uh, online for you guys to access. So there's definitely some cool books out there, especially if you guys are doing fantasy. There's a ton of uh, costume, armor, weapons, mm -hmm. architecture. Um, so many cool books out there for that. I really recommend, so these are, I all got from the Met Museum online collection. There's just like an absurd amount of really high quality images and all that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of other museums, I think, uh, that also just have online collections. I think they're a really underrated source of references compared to like people using, you know, Pinterest and Google because everyone does right. that. So you just end up right. with kind of the same images. Yeah. So I'd really recommend that. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, Wade, our moderator is saying, uh, flip, sip, stretch, save, something like that. So yeah, definitely oh, yes. always save, save your work. Don't forget, <laughs> do it. Happens to me all the time where I'm three hours in, I was like, I should probably save this. Oh yeah. Um, so, but yeah, definitely stretch guys. I know we're all stuck in chairs. Um, and also on, on that note, 
Um, just want to let you guys know Adobe Max is coming up. Very excited for this. Obviously, this is a huge virtual uh, learning inspiration tool event that we're going to have on October 26th through 28th. Um, you guys can register for free. It's at max.adobe.com. The lineup is awesome of people that are speaking. Uh, go check it out on the website. It's going to be pretty rad. And if you guys are on YouTube right now, come on over to Behance, b.net slash Adobe Live and come hang out with us and chat and ask Grace some questions because I'm sure she'll want to answer them. And uh, yeah, we're just talking about reference here and getting awesome online reference and kind of doing some digging yourself and seeing if you can find some cooler places other than just Google and image search and Pinterest, but kind of going out there a little bit and seeing what you can find, even out your front door. There's so many amazing things you guys can go and photograph and check out and keep a database for textures and piping and architecture. So yeah, this is fun. I'm, I'm glad we're, we're using so much reference for this. Always great with especially a little more realistic fantasy illustration is you really need that that reference so yeah absolutely this is awesome. um so i there's this like there was like a, a fantasia chart floating around the internet um well from time mm -hmm. to time and i think i'm very low on the being able to imagine things in my mind scale like mm -hmm. i i probably have some level of a fantasia so if i don't have like a source image to look at um, very often I'm unable to imagine like, I don't know, like this, for example, I don't think I'd be able to just create that out of nothing, but as soon mm -hmm. as I see a visual, I can think of all the different ways that I could put that on my image. So right. if you like, I don't know if anyone in the chat also has something like a Fantasia, I think that's something that's really helpful to have that reference. Even if you're not copying it, you're just using it for like really vague visual inspiration for me, mm -hmm. that's like an absolute must like i i wouldn't really be able to do this kind of design without something in the background yeah completely and i and the more you do it i think and I, i'm only speaking for myself obviously mm -hmm. um as i draw the more often i draw if i'm consistent with it usually those things that i drew i can start to store or it becomes almost like a muscle memory yeah so it's like if mm -hmm. i draw a dress enough or if, you know, I draw a shirt enough, I can start to make those informed decisions myself because I'm like, okay, I've drawn this shirt a hundred times. I know what it looks like now, but I think you're right, especially with doing something that's more intricate or it's just good to have a starting point. Cause when you just, when you're just trying to pull from your head, unless you do it often, or it's something that you're really good at, it's great to have a jump off point just a yeah, primer exactly. for your imagination, just to get the, the fire going. And, and I think that is, it's good advice. Cause I think a lot of people just start with a blank white page and they're trying to jump into it. And then the fear kicks in and they're like, I don't know what to do. And, uh, oh, for you, sure. and then you don't end up doing anything. So always, yeah. yeah, it's always good to just kind of have some starting point to, to help you along. And I, I still feel that like, you know, staring at a blank page being like, yeah. what am I doing? The fear doesn't go I away. Yeah, that never goes away. <laughs> it never goes away. You're always going to yeah. have a little little weird butterflies in your stomach, especially, you know, with the live streams and, and anything when, or for a new client or even an old client. It's it's like when you're doing professional work, you're, you know, it's you're, you should have that feeling because that means that you're you're trying to challenge yourself. You're trying yeah, to Yeah, and it means you're ca you care. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah, trying to improve. it's good. It should, mm -hmm. it should motivate you. Um, Matthew, I think it's Matthew McKelly. I hope I'm saying your name right. So do you guys have any suggestions for a good book or course for mastering human anatomy for illustration? Oh boy. There's a lot of stuff there's out so there. There's so many. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I might have a book right behind me. If I'm going, if I'm disappearing for a second. I have one over on the other bookshelves that I can bring over, but uh, I like Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty good one that still holds up pretty well. Uh, it's old enough that you can find like free eBooks of it. So 
Mm -hmm. I think that's always a plus when we're talking about books. Um, yeah, I don't know. Chris, what do you think? I, I know I'm like totally blanking right now. There are a few books that I have that I reference and like, mm -hmm. you know, they're all very similar to like human anatomy and figure drawing. And, you know, yeah. I can't think of the, the author. Um, but yeah, maybe that's something we can find and drop in the chat um, as we find out what it is. But yeah, there's there's a ton of books. Um, that's also something if you want to just do some uh, online snooping and searching, see if you can find. But um, there's usually the, those books out there you can find with what people reference. Um, it also depends on what you're aiming for. If you're doing more fantasy illustration or realistic, you definitely your anatomy book's going to be a little bit different than if somebody's working towards animation um, mm -hmm. or stylized illustration. So, but yeah, I and I remember in class um, I took a Eckershay class, and so we would do uh, one fourth scaled. Uh, we built the entire skeletal system. Um, to scale, you know, like the one force to quarter scale, and then you would wrap the muscular system on one side. So you'd end up with this two foot tall, um, you know, half skeleton, half muscle man. Uh, so that was, that helped me a lot. And that was obviously, you know, that was a, a four month course, just sculpting. Um, but stuff like that, I feel like helps a lot as well. Just being able to touch. There's something with sculpting the muscular system and sculpting the bones and like, cause it is anatomy is hard where you can't, if it's just 2D or drawings, it's hard to kind of see how those forms are wrapping, especially with some of your bones, you know, especially like your arm, you know, your radius and your ulna and the way they twist Yeah. as your arm is twisting. And so I think, having 3d reference is really cool oh, for, for sure. that um and i know there's a lot of i feel like there's so much new stuff that comes out all the time <laughs> i know yeah. art station is a great place to check out and even ask people um i feel like everybody and like you said joining a discord mm -hmm. um so many of those people are going to be able to help you out as well with finding really good reference for things yeah, um, I think that's what I love about art is that everybody's really willing to share mm -hmm. and share their process, um, which is so cool. Like there's never I mean, I guess everybody has their secrets or things, tricks and stuff that they don't want to share. But for the most part, I feel like the community is pretty open and giving as far as information and like where the best places to find things. And so. Yeah. yeah, I never keep any secrets, so I'm always a little bit, I don't know, <laughs> side-eyeing if anyone's like, oh, it's a secret. I don't want to tell you how I did it. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, the more you give, the better you get. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. That's because I think learning how to teach makes you, it makes you a better artist yourself mm -hmm. because you're breaking down your process which you might have not done before. There might be certain things where like, oh, I just kind of wing it. But then if you try to like reverse engineer, it's like, okay, how am I actually getting there? Yeah. And then, and then sometimes it helps you discover. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's a, this is a much better way to do this or faster way. Or, you know, there's only certain things that like, I can't really instruct my students to do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll stare at screen for about an hour um, and then do the, you know, then make yourself some coffee and then kind of come around and do some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah procrastinate for half the day no, yeah um, yeah and then it's just gonna come to you yeah it's really good to have that um breakdown and methodical approach uh once you start doing more client work i think for mm -hmm. personal work it doesn't matter but teaching has for sure helped me refine my process figure out what was you know really necessary how to um approach something methodically when i don't have the I don't know, the spark or the inspiration, I still have that process to fall back on. Um, and I think that's the most, um, the biggest game for me, like productivity wise, efficiency wise. Mm -hmm. And I don't really have art blocks. Like I think a lot of, well, I've seen a lot of people online talk about like, oh, you know, they they have an art block, they can't draw. And I, I totally, there are many different valid causes for that. Um, but if you were doing it, you know, professionally, it's, it, it's a really you know, difficult challenge and you can't yeah it's not compatible with like 
I guess, doing it professionally, I would say. Yeah. And I think with, especially with creative blocks or art blocks, it's trying to find something that you can just do as um, a study or mm -hmm. something that you can just use direct reference for or try to make it easy on yourself yeah. to just get the pencil on the paper or on, you know your, your pen on the screen or whatever you're however you're doing it the faster you get that moving the faster it's going to go away mm -hmm. but it's it's yeah it can be i've definitely had those moments where it's not i'm not i'll get the i'll get the project or the brief and i feel like sometimes that creative block isn't me not drawing it's just not drawing well or not yeah, like making something that's right. mm -hmm. yeah you're just like this is this is boring or trite yeah, it's and I'm not, not good what enough am I doing? For, mm -hmm. but I had to go through that for a day or two or a week or a few hours to finally break through and be like okay now we're cooking so yeah, it's yeah. kind of important to have those moments sometimes to just figure out in a bind because especially as freelance I'm sure you know it's like you don't always get the time that you want to make yeah, for sure. the thing that you want for the project. Sometimes mm -hmm. you only get a day or yeah, right. a couple of days or a week. And so you kind of, you have to find your own method to kind of push through those walls and still get the work done for the client and make something that's, that's of quality. Yeah. I'm sure part of experience is just figuring that out, um, figure out your own process as well, not just like what works for other artists, but really like your own timeline, what works for you uh that kind of stuff yeah because we're not you know not everybody's lightning fast i mean mm. i'm not lightning fast i mean yeah, i can work really fast slow. but it's not my you know i i, I watched some of these artists and i was like oh my gosh mm. <laughs> people are insane so it's yeah being realistic with your client being realistic with yourself um but still being able to push yourself so that you're not going so slow that it's not applicable to a profession or a job you know you have to make sure you can produce relatively quickly but you don't want to go so fast that you're um, sacrificing quality or creativity right so. um i had a student recently ask me about how to uh so i i was asking all the students like what they would like to improve the most in the class so you know i know what to work on with them uh and i had a student uh ask me like how do i get faster i want to um you know, get faster at drawing and finishing a painting. And I really just told him that like, I don't think it's a good metric for to improve on that much, especially um, I think at most stages of drawing, it's something that will come naturally with time. It's something that'll come mm -hmm. with getting better at fundamentals, but it's not really something that like you want to focus on that much, right? Because I think the quality yeah. matters a lot. Um, what you output matters a lot. How long it took you, like, unless it's super extreme, I think it's not really the most important thing to focus on. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like somebody trying to run really fast without good form. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not, you might improve here and there, but in the end, you're not really going to get to where you want to go because your form isn't there. You yeah. know, like shooting a basketball where it's like, well, I've got this really quick release. But it's like, if you got a terrible form, you're not going to make any of your shots. Yeah, you yeah, got the shot off, sure. but it's not going to go through the hoop. You're not going to score any points. Right. I think that's with, with art. It's You kind of have to go through that, like you said, really learn form, learn how to turn that form, learn your brush stroke, mm -hmm. what's comfortable, your holding positions, you know, like, what do you like working on? Do you like working digital? Do, or maybe you're better at drawing it off screen and then scanning it in and going from there or right yeah and just, figuring that out mm -hmm. yeah finding your own path is huge because you know top tier artists you know you look around it's like they are all completely different and have right. completely different methods yeah I mean, exactly. you really look at the top illustrators and, and designers it's like none of them do it the same mm -hmm. way they've all kind of come they've had their own journey that they've taken and it's what makes them special and it's what makes their art special is because they went on that journey and are now at a place where you know they've taken all of that experience and are producing the work that they're producing now so yeah speed isn't everything that's for sure yeah okay let's is... let's oh. 
Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish, I was going to say like, neither is copying like an artist exactly like what you said, what works for, you know, this artist that does really, really amazing stuff might not work for you. Right. So and it's, it's okay in the beginning, know. you know, it's like, as yeah, you're exactly. moving forward, totally copy thing. I mean, you want to know why something works and sometimes the, the best way to do that is just to copy. You know, we always did yeah. like master mm -hmm. copies and stuff and figure out what, yeah, why is that's this, also really so helpful. amazing. But when, yeah, when you start moving into your own, really, you, you want to start pushing yourself to have your own voice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so let's go over these. Um, are we getting close here? What's What do we got? Yeah, for sure. So right now I'm, I'm just cleaning up the variations a little bit so they're a bit easier to see. And then and we'll just a have... heads up, you've got about 40 minutes, I yeah, think, before we start that's wrapping totally up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That, yeah, that was definitely planned. Like okay, just want to make minutes. sure. Yes, okay, cool. thank you for checking. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to lay down a base so it's easier to see like what is and isn't a uh, part of the design and then Definitely. we will have a little vote in the chat. Perfect. Um, I think there are different strengths and weaknesses for all of these so mm -hmm. I'm really curious what people will end up liking the most and I'm just going to pull these all into a separate window so you can see them all next to each other. Cool. So that's design one. This is design two, and this is design three. Cool. Uh, all right, and we're gonna give the chat a minute to just type. Catch I guess type the us, number yeah. of your of the one that you prefer. All right, everybody in chat, do you hear that? Grace is wondering uh, which design we kind of maybe either you have comments about the design or or, or, or and um, which one we want to take further and mm -hmm. do with the, the finished illustration. So let us know in the chat when you guys get this. I'm man, I like three. <laughs> yeah, I think someone said in the chat that it looks uh, kind of like a Greek goddess. I think there is something well, a bit Wonder Woman about the, you know, about the. I could see that. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knee, what are they called? Knee, like, I, I don't. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Knee Shin plates. Guards. <laughs> Shin guards. Yeah, I don't know. Um, um, yeah. I think for for me, it's like for the Halloween kind of the darker vibe. I think I like mm -hmm. three. It feels okay. like it could almost like thorny or something. Like you could even take it further. Mm -hmm. um one as well i think has a little bit of that vibe as well with the horns and stuff yeah more two Halloween. is very two could be like a dark angel or something you know mm -hmm. um but yeah i think i think i'm digging three let's see what we got a lot of threes okay. and twos yeah let's see Ooh, three with the legs or two with the legs from three that's interesting hmm. leg bracers that's what somebody's called okay <laughs> We'll take it. Let's see. This is just gonna fill in the color here because that's supposed to be skin. Uh, it's pretty close, but I think three is yeah, winning out right now. It does look like three is has the majority. Wade is suggesting we use a straw poll. That's a lot of work, Wade. Yeah, <laughs> I think the chat <laughs> is a uh, clear enough no. with the preference we're do, for we're three. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna guesstimate. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wade, though. I'll use that in the future. Become mm -hmm. a tool of mine. And if you guys are on YouTube, you're missing out, come over to Behance, b.net slash Adobe Live, come vote, come check out the mm -hmm. designs over here. You guys participate. All right. Well, I think three is winning. I don't see any more votes. Um, but yeah, I guess the final like decision will be for you, Grace. Yeah, um, I really like three. Uh, I'm a bit partial towards one as well, but I think three does have a level of detail that the other two don't. Um, so yeah, let's let's go with three, and we'll just uh, work on refining this a bit. Oh, Wade, you made it so easy. People did already vote on the straw poll. Yeah, oh, three, nice. three okay. is a clear, I'll just clear winner. Check that as well. Okay, nice, perfect. Perfect. All right, thank you all for voting. Um, yeah, I'm excited about three. So let's go ahead with this. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned back at the beginning of the stream, um, I want to just put a lighter color for me to then do the clean sketch on top. Right. And then 
Yeah, I'll just go ahead and do that. But I need to. And again, you're going to be using the hard round brush for this as well. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I'll bring my reference back. I think mm -hmm. I accidentally closed it. Oh no, I didn't. I just move it to the side. Okay. Perfect. There is something a little bit more difficult about three is that like it's symmetrical, but it's in perspective. Um, yes. So it is a Always little fun. challenging, but yes. we'll figure it out as we go. But it's organic. You can kind of, you know. Yeah, I'll can... like wing it a bit. Yeah, you can fake it a little bit. Yeah. Fake it till you make it, people. Yes. Um, so for the lines, I like to use uh, the same brush, but at lower opacity. So basically, okay. if I mess up, I can just like kind of draw over it with like a very dark line and then I don't have right. to, you know, spend time to go to the eraser and then go back. Um, right, exactly. Yeah, so this has worked pretty well for me. But I'm also thinking if I want to add like a like a circlet or something to really complete mm. the Yeah, totally. the Greek goddess kind of look. I'll figure yeah, it out I think later. That'd be really nice. Yeah. Just figuring something out for now. And I'll draw in more details later. Very cool. <laughs> Someone suggested, uh, Cartier Gates said, floating scarf and a crow with a pumpkin head. <laughs> <laughs> It's very specific. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if that's in the end result. I don't know if I could incorporate a pumpkin head into this design. <laughs> I feel like I would like to, but I don't know about the direction. <laughs> She'll be in a pumpkin patch. Yeah. Yeah, I think people like the leaf crown or something oh, nice. similar. Yeah. So now after this, are you going to do another final or is this kind of what you use for the basis of the painting? Yeah, so I usually don't go further than kind of like a clean sketch before I start painting. Mm -hmm. um, right. I'm not really a line art artists in general, yeah, it completely. really hurts my hand to do line arts, actually. So I try to avoid it whenever possible. Yeah. Um, well, so it... after this, I'd be experimenting with some different color palettes, uh, which I'll okay. also love input from the chat about. Um, cool. And then yeah, after that is just rendering out the painting. Awesome. And do you do a lot of studying of costume and clothing design reference is there anything like a specific time period that you like looking at or other artists work like what kind of inspires mm -hmm. you as far as um especially like the fit of clothing and, and the costume and kind of how it works with the body uh yeah that's a good question i mean i i have a lot of inspirations but i would say the biggest one has to be like just modern like fashion you know high fashion haute couture mm -hmm. it's just like I, I love it. Like, I love seeing runway shows. Um, mm -hmm. I just love all the creativity and the the amazing things they do with fabric and other materials. But then mm -hmm. still, that still, like, you know, stays on the body as a piece of clothing. I just think it's really right. fantastic. Um, yeah. I find it so inspiring. Like, I get chills looking at the, you know, really amazing pieces that they come out with every year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say that's a huge source of inspiration for me. Okay. And when I... When I do studies as well, um, I usually try to like look for just really cool flowing cloth is kind of my favorite thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. But also other stuff like suits, shirts, just to understand the the basic push and pull of the fabric. Um, mm -hmm. So all of the you know fabric I'm doing in the sketch is really just kind of like you said muscle memory because I've just done it so much and I really right. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean the the uh, the high fashion world. 
when you're moving into it's basically fine art it's yeah something exactly. other, you know it's like well yeah of course a lot of this isn't really meant to be worn yeah outside of this but it's not mm-hmm. meant for that in the frame it's meant to be a piece of art you know on our body and really is impressive some of the things that they're able to build and and make especially since they've got to wear it right <laughs> yeah point, it's like hell for sure i also get a lot of inspiration from traditional chinese clothing um, mm-hmm. So actually, in recent years, there's kind of a movement that's like the Hanfu revival. It's uh, a lot of people buying these uh, traditional clothing that was popular in China, like maybe some, you know, thousand years ago, uh, mm-hmm. just like really more ancient traditional clothing. Uh, and I just think it's so cool. It's so beautiful. Um, there's all these brilliant colors, amazing embroidery details and everything. Um and I, I would just really recommend checking it out for inspiration. There's kind of like a movement to of people just wearing this, like, you know, as I go shopping, like on the street, like you'll see people dress in these, you know, ancient times inspired outfits. And like, you know, they're on their f- smartphone crossing the street. Um, right. So I think that's really the, cool. The juxtaposition just, of those yeah, things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like riding the subway. It's, it's just kind of funny. Mm-hmm. But also just like, I think they really bring some beauty, you know, back into the everyday life, which I, I just think is super cool. What's the movement called? Uh, Hanfu. It's H-A-N-F-U. Check that out. Yeah. Oh, cool. Like it's almost become a sort of streetwear in some areas. Yeah. I don't know. It's really beautiful. And then I can see with all the, like the drapery. Yeah. It's really cool. I can see studying this and looking at it. It's really beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's always cool going back and looking at your roots and, looking at old traditional styles it's mm-hmm. like there's no reason why you can't keep those things around i mean obviously sometimes some of these it's hard to apply to modern day but yeah clothing though is just it's so cool and it is kind of a bummer because a lot of that artistry is lost and doesn't really stick around mm-hmm. um unless there unless there's people actively trying to keep it yeah this exactly really beautiful there's some preservation here as well because yeah it's kind of traditions that are dying um i know not maybe not specific to china but there's a lot of like old crafts in many parts of the world where they just don't have apprentices anymore and you mm-hmm. just you're not going to have that like they have the old masters have no one to pass that knowledge on to which you know yeah. i always find kind of sad um yeah, so i think completely. it's cool that like you know modern younger people are making these things reviving these things essentially with like social media connecting them to modern trends um and i think it's really cool it's like part of preserving history yeah and i think especially in a world where because before it's like that was passed down to you you know uh, by your family or right you know, yeah before modern times it's like something you just kind of carried on and mm. you don't have to do that anymore and i think it is cool that people are still very interested in it and keeping those things around yeah for sure and it's also very cool for fantasy fashion design yeah yeah exactly so we need it keep it around <laughs> Grace, Grace needs her reference. <laughs> yes, keep it for me. Just for Grace. I'll see Wade already putting up links. Thanks, bud. Yeah. So we got the hand food nice. movement up there. Perfect. Perfect. Cartier Gates says, I tried playing around with Bohemian and Punk. That's a good combo. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to have. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I don't do so much in my fantasy work, but I'm also, you know, inspired by like early 2000s alternative fashion, like emo, goth scene, whatever. If I'm doing a modern design, like I just feel like there's a lot of cool stuff there that like 
yeah, okay, maybe it was just a phase when I was a teenager, but like, I think there's some really cool stuff left that I still like to look back on very fondly. Oh, yeah. Completely. That's, um, I remember this was like early 2000s. I've, um, mm. getting these books, um, they're from, I think it was at Harajuku. It's the fashion like area in Japan. Yep. Um, and there's these books called Fresh Fruits. Mm -hmm. And it was all about the fashion style there at the time. And it was just a photo book. Oh, wow. Of, like all these different people dressed up. And it was, it was so cool. Cause I was oh, like, for I sure. never seen anything like that. I was like, this is yeah. awesome. But yeah, just a like really wild, almost like that happy hardcore style. Um, oh, for sure, yeah. But yeah, like you know, but integrate with like the goth and like the Lolita and like the cyberpunk and all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I I love that. I know the trend is like old news by now, but I still love all of that. Um, yeah, like old Japanese subculture fashion. It's there's just so much to be found there. Like it's crazy how creative. It's pretty wild. Are. Yeah, yeah, like even no. back in the well, 90s, it's really cool. Well, and a lot of like cosplay and stuff mm. was inspired by that. I mean, you know, um, yeah, there's just so much going on over there at that time, too. Just, yeah, that I don't think a lot of other, not a lot of other cultures were getting that out mm. there with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. This this part I love as an illustrator. This is the part mm -hmm. that I love doing. It's almost like the in between, and you're just really starting to lay out some not the final lines, but kind of some of those final ideas with your design. I, this is a very satisfying place for me in a in a drawing or a painting. Uh I can't relate. <laughs> um, th th I think like, it's actually no. the exact opposite for me. Um, yeah. I love having you here to chat with while I do this because otherwise, like, I, th I find this stage kind of boring, like, yeah. because I already know what it's going to be, but I can't mm -hmm. get there because I do have to do a clean version in order for, for it to look nice later. Um, right. So I kind of feel like this is just almost filler work for me. It's kind of chill, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I'd also get bored, uh, so I, I love um, talking to people at this stage, or if I'm by myself, I usually just put on, like, a Netflix in the background, because, right. yeah, for me, this is kind of dull, but I'm glad that you like this part, so yeah. it's <laughs> like, cool that your pain, experiences are different. Part. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm much more of a, um, like, draftsman line work. Mm -hmm. uh, I love inking, so yeah I, for me it's like the more i get to work with line the better and i've okay. actually been in my work recently i've been really trying to push away from doing line work just because it doesn't oh that's you know, so funny because <laughs> it's the exact just, opposite for me yeah for a lot of stuff it's like you can't have line work in there and still you know get these certain uh vibe you know for, you can't have that really nice painterly feeling if you got a mm -hmm. bunch of dark lines in there so yeah. For a lot of work, I've just started being like, okay, I got to push that back or I can do that part, but that's just going to be the outline for my silhouette or that's where mm -hmm. I'm going to put my flats in and I can make that really nice or try to find that satisfaction of getting those nice tight lines, but not put that into the final piece. Um, right. But yeah, that, that is just me. It's like, I like that technical part of it. Mm -hmm. just like really refining a design and, and the line work okay but yeah, yeah especially that's if, funny you, if you're, really you're so painterly it, that so, it's like yeah. yeah it's kind of the opposite of what you want to be yeah, doing exactly. you're like i want to get in there with the color and like yeah. really start to push and pull the paint, shapes and, but no yeah. I'm still doing the design yeah And I'm assuming you are you're using a, a Cintiq or some type of tablet. Uh, it's or a yeah, Intuos? it's a really old Intuos. Um, okay. It's lasted me about ten years. It's so funny because during my class last week, I was like, I've been using this tablet for ten years. It's never failed me. And then it dies in the middle of class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Um, I did have a backup tablet, so I found out it's actually just a USB connecting port that was having issues. So it's fine; mm -hmm. it still works. Um, yeah. But it was just so ironic that, like, immediately after I was like, this tablet is great. It just mm -hmm. no, it just gives up. 
Um, yeah. But it's okay. It's all fixed now. So you enjoy kind of having the looking at the screen here and then being able to mm -hmm. draw. Yeah, I know. I, yeah, that's how I, I started out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and it's funny because once I got used to it, I didn't even think. I was like, oh yeah, that's how you do it. And then yeah, I'm just used when to I it got it when I got a Cintiq. Mm -hmm. then uh, for me it made a big change i know a lot of people are like yeah i tried it and wasn't into it but i it started to feel like i was making traditional art again for myself mm -hmm. because it felt like i was drawing on a piece of paper or right just because i was directly on the screen but mm -hmm. yeah i know a lot of i know a lot of guys uh, a lot of people that they prefer the intuos over the the cintiq or drawing directly onto a screen yeah um, I do have an iPad with an Apple Pencil that I mm -hmm. tried to use, but I don't know. There's just something about it that I can't quite get used to. Mm -hmm. um, a big part is the way I paint. I use a lot of very like Photoshop specific shortcuts. So like uh, you'll see it later once I start painting. But for example, it would be like the there's the dial on the on the tablet to quickly change your brush size. And there's also mm -hmm. the alt click for color picking. Those two are so central to my process that like I literally can't paint on the iPad because of it because it just doesn't quite have the same thing. Right, right. It is a little, yeah, it is definitely a little different. Yeah. I'd like to get better at um, painting on the iPad just because, you know, I could use it more on the go. Um, but for now, I haven't really had the time to figure out an alternative way of doing it. Yeah, I've would work. I found that with the iPad, I I can do character design work on it, and then mm -hmm. and do a lot of my kind of like sketching and ideas. But if mm -hmm. if I'm doing a final piece for a client, I almost always transfer it over into Photoshop. Yeah, just like and I think mm -hmm. it is because it's like, well, I've only got so much time, and I'm like not yeah. trying to really learn this whole new process. Like I know exactly yeah. how I'm set up in photoshop i know you know my hotkeys and like where everything is so yeah i i, I understand that yeah but yeah I, I wish i had more time to like experiment and really figure out how uh how to best draw on the ipad but no it's just yeah like you said it doesn't really work for client work when you're really just trying to get to the finished piece with as few missteps as possible mm-hmm and to yeah, not go over the time you have budgeted as well. Yeah, somebody that um, when I was at Lightbox Expo, mm -hmm. I think it was 2019 um, when it was still in person. That was the first one at the Pasadena Convention Center. Right. I saw a demo by uh, Nicholas Cole mm -hmm. and he did everything on the iPad and it was really impressive. And that's like what inspired me to go get an iPad. Oh, okay. So I was just like, well, you can, you can do it. And then, and yeah. I've done, I have done some, I've almost come to like the completion on the iPad, but I always mm -hmm. import it into Photoshop at the end. I'm just like, I gotta just <laughs> yeah. check the things and yeah. like, make sure that For like sure. everything is okay. But yeah. it's definitely possible would, for yeah. other people, oh. just not me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, as far as like brushes too, like, um, like you said, like I'm, for the longest time, I would just use a hard round brush for almost everything mm -hmm. and then create textures just like I would if I was painting. Um, but I did, when I started to look like, oh, I could create like a watercolor painting. And so that was, I think for stuff like that, I really started to see the value of, I'm gonna go get a watercolor set. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, and they're so good now that it's like, I felt like I was painting with watercolors because mm -hmm. of the way that the brushes interacted with each other. It's like, oh, you can't paint over that. I mean, you could, but it's yeah. not gonna look like watercolor. So it's like, you, it's almost like you're treating it like a watercolor painting digitally, mm -hmm. even though you could totally cheat and work around and everything. Like I still found myself being like, I gotta make this mark perfect. <laughs> like I gotta right, make sure yeah. that this color bleeds into here. And so yeah, that's, because it's digital. That's been kind of fun finding, you know, doing texture work that um with something like watercolors that would be really hard mm -hmm. to do with just a regular brush it's like it, it getting the texture of the paper and, and everything so when you look at it you're like oh my gosh i don't know what that is 
is it digital or is it watercolor? So I, stuff like that mm. is the, the few times where I'm really excited to use different brushes because otherwise yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't know how many textures I really want to bring into this thing that aren't just from the brush. Yeah, I definitely think it's really fun to experiment. Although for me, I think if I would, rather than using watercolor brushes, usually when I try it out, it, it's nice and it usually works well. Um, like I've tried the live brushes in Adobe Fresco and they, they look pretty mm -hmm. nice, but ultimately I would rather just use my actual watercolor set. Like Totally. Uh, yeah, like just do some traditional painting for once. Um, good, good excuse to get off yeah, the computer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I definitely spend way too much time in front of the computer. I know, I'm always telling myself like, okay, Maybe try this, maybe just try this step off the computer. And it's like, eh, yeah, yeah, do faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do see a lot of, um, a lot of comic book illustrators too. The people that I thought would never go digital. Oh yeah. Are, are doing digital work now and, um, through clip studio, procreate and Photoshop and other things, but right is cool or, or or what they'll do is they'll do their sketch digitally mm. and then print it and then ink it on top yeah. of the digital sketch just because it's so much faster to kind of right do that sketch yeah um, digitally i only learned recently that a lot of even oil painters nowadays do that like they'll just do a digital sketch or yeah. they have their reference like entirely comped in photoshop and then they'll just transfer it onto the canvas so I skipped yeah. the meticulous drawing step, which yeah. is always what I hated about painting traditionally. So I'm like, oh, that's like, a, that's a really neat trick. And it still hasn't made me paint more traditionally, but yeah. when I do, I'm definitely going to use that. Yeah, it's not, I mean, the stigma is kind of gone now. Yeah. That, that I think a lot of people had with taking any digital steps when you're doing any kind of traditional work. Right. I mean, now, gosh, even tattoos, people oh, yeah? are doing digital drawings for the tattoo and then printing oh, it. Oh, okay. Hmm. You know, no which idea. was, that was like heresy oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, to in the tattoo community to like even think about doing that. But I think it's changed so much now, especially yeah. just people's time. It's like, yeah. well, what's, 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 yeah, worth more to you, you know, like going through this process mm -hmm. or your time to maybe make it better or do something else. So right. I, I think that's, where it is for a lot of people. It's just like, my time is valuable and the mm. faster I can get to the end point and still have the quality that I want, I'm going to take that path. Right. And the end result is what matters the most, right? Like to enjoy yeah. the process. Yes. But, um, to do a process for the sake of doing it, not so much, I feel. Yeah. Well then you're, it's, you're, it's something else, right? Like mm. that. And that's where like things like fine art and other were, it's all about exploring the process and like that's mm -hmm. kind of like you can look look at an abstract painting and just be like eh. but if you knew <laughs> the story behind that abstract painting and maybe like the years worth of work that went into it and maybe this is all like a collection of like paint chips that came off of a painting from like this abandoned house like that way it's like it's much more interesting but when you're mm -hmm. when you're doing straight on illustration when you're doing stuff for entertainment or um it it doesn't make as much sense. You really, yeah. you really are trying to get to this beautiful end result and trying to find ways that aren't going to take away um, from the quality of it, but still be able to get you there as as quick as you can, um, because you want to do more of them. You want to keep. You want to make more paintings. You want to make more characters. You want to get more. Take on more jobs. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Especially what you were saying about uh, like comic book illustrators going digital mm -hmm. i mean considering like how much work they have to do and how little they get paid for it a lot of the time yes. like i think that just makes sense like yeah. how can you I'm, not take the easier way i'm currently on page 160 of my own graphic novel oh wow <laughs> oh my gosh it was okay taken a while and it yeah was for sure so much hard work and i, I can't I definitely imagine it was a project I agreed to and I had never done a comic book before. And, mm -hmm. uh, the writer just kind of had faith. And so we've been doing it ever since, but I mean, it has opened my eyes. I'm like, this is easily one of the hardest jobs out there. 
Oh, I mean, I'm sure. Like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Just to keep consistency and continuity through uh, a book that size and with the mm -hmm. characters, and it's it's very difficult. So, whole I, I have an insane appreciation for for uh, comic book artists that I, I did have before, but now I really understand it is it is a tough job. Yeah, for sure. And a tough crowd. <laughs> yeah. Our job and yeah. a very and critical updates fan so base. Often, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, I'm not a machine. Um, oh, yeah. Participating in Inktober. It is Inktober. That mm -hmm. is true. Very exciting. I usually don't participate just because I'm busy doing stuff and yeah, I got kids and all that. But uh, I might try to do it this year. It seems like it'd be something fun or maybe do a few this year. Are you, mm -hmm. Do you ever participate in that? Or is that anything that you ever get involved in with any of these online kind of like, I guess, trends or mm -hmm. hashtags or? So the most number of days I've ever done for Inktober is like three days. I think that's my yeah. record. <laughs> like I, did I can't it. do these. I would love I to. It. Um, the most I've done f is for May sketch a day last year where I actually mm -hmm. did like 30, I think there are 30 days in, May, days in May. So I did 30 pieces. You're like, I'm not but going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. But you could really see the quality, like noticeably decline at like the half, the 15 day mark. Like the first 10 were pretty good. There were some ups and downs. And then towards yeah. the middle, it was clear that I had just like ran out of ideas and was like oh my, grasping at straws for something. You're like, what am I um, doing? Yeah, no, that doesn't work too well for me due to my schedule, the commissions and everything. But I would like to do like a one drawing a week kind of challenge. I feel like mm -hmm. that's more my pace. Um, yeah. One a day is just I don't I don't think I have that many good ideas. <laughs> like, like I said, I just ran out of ideas um, during it's a month long challenge. Yeah, for sure. It's um, definitely tough. Yeah, I really admire the people that can do that. Um, or people who have an art style that's more compatible with that. But for me, it's just right. it's not really uh, my thing. Yeah, if you could just do this every day mm -hmm. and make sure it's inks, no, no color. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no, that's uh, it seems like it's something that I would want to do. But it's mm -hmm. just, yeah, I always find myself like, uh, I've got all this other stuff to do. I can't. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll do exactly. that if I have the time. But yeah, it's tough. It is awesome, though. It is awesome seeing all the work that comes through. Mm -hmm. So right now what I'm doing is just laying the base flat for the different sections. Um, I'm not going to really get into the color today. It's more just mm -hmm. to... Uh, have the like the base layer so I can lock transparency and then do right, all of the right. color yep. process on top. So right now this is just like a really random color that I want to um, I want it to be bright enough so I can see the see it against the four the lines in the background. Right. So I can right. tell that I have the correct like all of the cloth filled in, for example, uh, mm -hmm. and then the colors will come in later. Yeah, this is you're just basically building the foundation so they can yes, paint on top of this. Exactly. Yeah. See, this is the part that I don't like. <laughs> yeah, this one this part isn't that fun either. But for yeah. me, I I it's like I also don't like the I would say so this part and the previous you just part hate what the I was entire, drawing. Yeah, everything for like the I first do few dislike hours, the middle. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, the middle is really where I kind of struggle and lose track um, you heard it here fo first folks yeah. uh grace <laughs> does not like drawing or painting no <laughs> just touch-ups at the end just the highlights that's exactly it. that's the that's you the need to find part. an assistant we need to get you an assistant yes. to do all the yeah, busy i need work someone to you. do all of the other work who wants to do some free work <laughs> <laughs> yes please you gotta put out that intern call You're like <laughs> yeah exactly you'll gain some experience mm -hmm. Um, just a heads up. It's a we got about let's see, probably got about ooh, another another eight minutes or so, or seven minutes before we start wrapping it up. Just saying. Okay, that. yeah, that's perfect. Like fill in the base color for some of the other sections, and I think we'll be yeah. all good for today. Yeah, it's great. I know. I'm impressed at how far we've come. This is beautiful. Yeah, 
I'm I'm happy that I managed to like uh, distribute the time pretty well because this is exactly uh, what I was planning on. So I'm really glad that yeah, worked no, that's out. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I like the I definitely like that headpiece. I think that was needed. Yeah, yeah, I definitely needed something. When some with like the flow, it kind of connects. I, I, the way that the the reeds are coming off the uh, the shoulders there, I, mm -hmm. I just kind of like how it brings it it brings it full circle around her face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Well, it seems like the chat loves it too. So. Oh, great! Everybody Happy seems to, to be enjoying that. this. <laughs> some ghost painting? <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe there will be some ghosts tomorrow. We don't know. Maybe she's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess before we get off, I guess remind everybody that we've got Adobe Max coming up uh, October 26th and 28th. Completely virtual experience. Um, it's got a ton of amazing guest speakers, uh, tutorials, things for you guys to learn about all the cool new stuff coming out for the Creative Cloud. Um, you can register, no cost, it's free, max.adobe.com. So if you haven't checked that out, check it out. It's coming up, should be really awesome. I'm just, and like you said, it's so cool how many how many things are now virtual that people really get access to that we didn't have before or we did, but now because everything's virtual, everything's been enhanced and mm -hmm. the tools that you get access to and the people, it's just it's pretty amazing. So and Adobe Max is gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So go register if you guys haven't, check it out. Wade put it in the uh, in the chat if you guys need the link. Somebody, Cherry Blossom said, it's fairy Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see that. We, yeah, that's that's good. We got the leg bracers. Yes, so. exactly. Yeah, very iconic. So tomorrow, are we going to be looking at, are we going to be doing, um, or talking about the background or what she's going to be kind of, is this going to be more of like a like a paint like a painterly background, or is there going to be any kind of uh, objects or anything that might be integrated? Do you know yet? Or um, I haven't really thought about it, so that's a really good question. I think I'm going to okay. think about it after the stream today. Okay. Um, cool. Yeah, because this is more character design focused, I'm not sure if we'll have that much for the background, but I'll definitely right, think right. about having something. Uh, because just white, it would definitely feel too empty for like a finish, finished illustration. Uh, right. So yeah, we'll see. And okay, if you have cool. any suggestions or if anyone in the chat has any suggestions, maybe I'll put in something. Yeah, something. <laughs> exactly. Something spooky for Halloween. We'll see. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. And with with your colors, is that something that you kind of feel out as you move forward do you have do you have a direct reference for that that you like to use or is it just you just kind of like okay this is the vibe and then you kind of just start playing with the color or... uh it really depends um if i have like no ideas like if i'm just drawing a blank i will typically pull up a reference and that's usually going to be an artwork from another artist and just start like picking the colors seeing what works and then adding my own twist to it uh, but sometimes I will have something in mind already, in which case I'll just kind of go ahead and do it and then tweak it a bit until I find something that I like. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like color is such an intricate process. And especially, I think that more than anything is everybody's very individual journey and kind of how they get to their color palettes. And there's just so many options. Yeah, there's so many different ways of doing it. Um, for mm -hmm. me, I have kind of narrowed it down to those two, either wing it or kind of start with a reference. Um, mm -hmm. But I know there are also people that use like the color palette. I think it's uh, Adobe Color. Oh, OK, maybe not. <laughs> um, but there's uh, there's all kinds of like color palettes that you can um, that you can find online. Mm -hmm. um, you, I, I think also, Adobe does have something now. I remember last yeah. stream, I think I found out about it. Yeah. Yeah. It used well, to work. Wait, someone um, will help us out there. Yeah. Yes, 
if it's still uh, an option. Or maybe I just need to like update Photoshop. Yeah, gosh, you got to get the brand new. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's how I was for a long time. I'd be like, oh, this is good. Yeah. I'll just stick with this for as I long as I can. I hate updating things. If I get a pop-up, I always click no, right? It's just like a habit. You're like, I've got, I've got the <laughs> method. Don't change anything. No. Yeah, I know that feeling. exactly. Okay, Wade, Wade helped us out there. It's uh, color.adobe.com. Yeah, so yes. It's a good, good reference. you can get a bunch of color themes. Um, Especially if you're kind of, if you're starting out and you don't have a large visual reference library or you're just like kind of drawing a blank and you want to get something going, it's definitely mm -hmm. uh, one of the options. Yeah, it's always, it's always good doing that stuff. And mm -hmm. Like you said, just having a primer or something that's going to yeah. help you get to the next step. Mm -hmm. We got about five minutes left, mm -hmm. so... Just wrapping up the uh, foundation here for our colors. Obviously, these aren't the exact colors we're going to be using later, but yeah, not at all. Just like kind of are. building the layers up and getting the mm -hmm. getting ready to pick those colors and having the having the layer worked out so that you don't have to do that busy work. Yeah, exactly. Just setting up for tomorrow's stream. Yeah, and what do we? Yeah, take us through while you're finishing up. Uh, just take us through what you want to do tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Um, so here you can kind of see the two main colors that I have. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'll probably keep like, so the yellowish color will probably be some kind of metal and then the purple will of course be some kind of cloth. Um, but right. within that, you know, there's a ton of variations. I could even add, I don't know, some kind of tights underneath. Uh, I do want to, so that's kind of the first part, figuring out the color mm -hmm. palette. Um, Maybe I think it would look good with another accent color. So that's something that I'm going to figure out tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have the chat vote on which color palette they like the most. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. I'll be talking about how to you know, render up the metal so it looks really metallic, how I approach painting cloth, um, all the stuff that I really enjoy a bit more than the drawing, I would say. Yeah. So if you tuned in today, it was the wrong day. You guys have to come tomorrow <laughs> because that's when yes. the fun begins. Yeah, yes, if you, you tune in today, to you have to come tomorrow to join yeah. in the fun. Uh, you guys just had to sit through this horribly beautiful illustration the whole time. Yeah, sorry, sorry, you had to see yeah. this. <laughs> Whoops. No, that's that's awesome. That's exciting. I'm excited. Being an illustrator myself, I I feel so lucky to sit in on these and get to see people break down their process because it helps me too. I'm just like, oh yeah, I didn't, I never thought about that. Right. There's so many times where I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot about that tool or yeah. I didn't even know about that tool. Or yeah. Shortcut. Or like, wait, you can, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, like just for example, like I was saying, just pressing something onto an oil painting, like that's allowed. And that's like, a, yeah. you know, like a revelation. When yeah. You see no, it this is, it's awesome. It's really awesome seeing this. And I think, I think having these helps people so much. So thank you so much for being here today and so excited for you to be here tomorrow um, and finish this thing up. I, I'm like trying to imagine where it's going to go. It's like, I'm like, oh, what's she going to do with this? Um, this is so cool. And you yeah, did it sure. so like, Thanks. it's, you you were able to put in a lot of detail without really noodling it too much or really putting in that much detail. It really, it almost looks more detailed than it really is. Um, I think right. the placement the placement of your detail is what works so well with this one. So yeah, very excited for this. Um, yeah. And if you guys remember, come over to Behance tomorrow. So don't go over to YouTube, come to b.net slash Adobe live tomorrow, straight away. So you guys can hop mm -hmm. in the chat early on and ask all the important questions. Um, Oops. Just going to leave oh this no. up for a bit. Uh, it's just going to be a small thumbnail. Yeah, That's it's going to show get. it in its entirety a tiny for a little bit. Tiny, tiny avatar. Um, <laughs> as we're wrapping up. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how this has gone so far. Um, I think I'll probably leave it here for today. There's, uh, It's a good place to stop. Um, and I'm sure I'll notice things, you know, when I come back to it, when I look at it again, uh, that I wish was different. So I'm going to think on mm. that and then think about the background a little bit as well. It'll probably just be like... I don't know, something decorative that kind of frames the, the, the character a little more. 
uh, probably not like, you know, a full on Greek pal palace or stadium right. or whatever. And are we going to yeah. stay on this canvas size or are you going to be? Uh, that's a good question. I'll probably make it twice as big. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. To paint in all the details. That's but, awesome. I don't know. Maybe something planty just to frame the character. Planty kind of is good. continue the nature goddess vibe. Yeah. If you know, have an art see. director asking you <laughs> what the vibe is, <laughs> say planty. Yes. Oh, yes. Planty. <laughs> They'll understand immediately. Yeah. Like, I'm going for a planty vibe. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. It looks like everybody in the chat uh, enjoyed all of this. Um, I'm, I'm hoping there's a little more. Uh, we're going to get some spooky too mm -hmm. tomorrow with the, I think with the colors. This is yeah, going to be good. Maybe some little skulls peeking through the plants. Ooh. See, now we're talking. Yeah. Some skulls. Some I like pumpkin that. Pumpkin in the background too. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, I could, I could definitely fit that in, I think. Oh, yeah. This is going to be yeah. awesome. So, yeah. yeah, please, guys, join us tomorrow. We're so excited. Thank you for joining us today. We're with Grace Jew. We're doing some fantasy character illustration. Uh, we're going to be on tomorrow um, at 9 30 Pacific time. Um, it's going to be part two. We're going to be finishing up, finishing up the background, finishing up this painting, working on our colors. Uh, please come in. You can vote. You can choose where this is going to go. So please be there with us. And also, uh, don't forget, there's the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Uh, those replays are going to happen with Julia Masalska immediately following this stream. And then logo design with Alex Lazarus. So Please stick around and we hope to see you guys tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Thank you, Grace. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all so all right, much. Guys. And see you tomorrow. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>